Yo, what is going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay, so welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that's somewhat of a grey area when it comes to riding a bike, and that is filtering. So apologies dudes, haven't put up a video for a couple of weeks. If you follow me on social media or you're in the Discord channel, you would have saw that I've actually got an injured foot at the moment, so I wasn't able to ride my bike. It is a lot better to the point where I can ride a bike and drive the car again, but it's not 100% healed, so I'm just taking it easy. This is really like the first or second time I've been out on the bike in about three weeks, so it's good to get back out. It is really good to get back out, but she's dirty. She's been sitting all by herself for a few weeks, so she's needing a good clean. But it's good to get back to the garden and get back out on the bike. So in this video, I'm actually going to break it up into two parts. The first part, we're going to be having a wee discussion on filtering. And the second part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of diagrams up on screen and I'm going to do some voiceover stuff at home and we'll go over different filtering scenarios. So we're going to go over the kind of theory side of things. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you some diagrams on you know, kind of filtering scenarios and things like that. Halfway through the video, what I'll do is we'll go back to that little car park where we sometimes go to, and I'm going to show you some slow manoeuvre stuff, because obviously filtering is slowly moving through traffic, and you need to make sure that your slow manoeuvre is absolutely on point. What is filtering and is it legal? So filtering in the UK is 100% legal. You are legally allowed to filter through traffic. If you look at the highway code, there are numerous mentions of filtering, but there are two rules that every road user should be aware of. And the first rule is rule 88. And it's quite a big paragraph, but we're only going to concentrate on one key phrase. And that phrase is, when filtering through traffic, take care and keep your speed low. Now this is aimed at bikers, letting them know that when you're filtering, you're absolutely okay to filter, as long as you do it carefully and you keep your speed down. The next rule I want to talk about is rule 160 and this one is aimed at other road users and that rule states be aware of other road users especially cycles and motorcycles as they may be filtering through traffic. So that's aimed at people who are not on bikes so whether you're in a car, bus, lorry, whatever. That's letting you know that it's legal to filter and expect to see people on cycles and motorcycles potentially filtering through traffic. Now there's one thing you have to know about the highway code, is the highway code is not a legal document, but there are lots of traffic rules that back up certain things in the highway code and filtering is one of them. So what is filtering then? Filtering is basically threading your bike through slow moving or idle traffic. You're basically taking your bike and you're cutting through traffic. There are a couple of different types of filtering. So for instance, if you're moving on a single lane road, you know, just like through a town, and you have traffic going your way and traffic going the opposite way and everything's slowed down, you can cut up the middle of them so you're threading your way through traffic. The other type of filtering is when all the vehicles on your side of the road are stationary. There's no other vehicles coming the other way, you can just pass them. Obviously if there's vehicles coming the other way, it would then be that threading style of filtering, so you'd have to be a bit more careful. But if the other side of the road is completely clear and all you want to do is pass all the stationary traffic, you would just take it nice and easy and go out past them. We spoke about the slow manoeuvring at the start of the video. There are going to be times, you know, especially if you're going to be moving through like a bigger, bigger town or a big city where traffic is going to be guaranteed to be moving slowly, then that slow manoeuvre stuff is absolutely vital because you could be, you know, manoeuvring the bike in between cars, you know, looking for little gaps to help save a bit of time. Having that slow manoeuvre is absolutely vital. And you may have absolutely zero issues with slow manoeuvre, but later on in the video we'll go and we'll do a wee bit of slow manoeuvre stuff. Just a few minutes just showing you the way that I do it, and then once you've kind of got it in your brain, you never really have to think about it again, it just does it naturally. So on to the actual filtering itself. Everybody has their own way of doing it, you know, not everybody filters the same. People have their own little way of doing things, you know, how fast they do it. You know, some people choose not to do it. Right, so first thing I'm going to talk about with filtering is speed. 
what speed should you be travelling at? The way that I look at it, I look for three things. The first thing I look for is what speed is the traffic doing? The second thing is what speed do I need to do to pass the traffic? And then the last thing is what is the speed limit on the road that we're travelling on? So generally when I'm filtering, I like to be doing probably about 5 or 10 miles an hour faster than what the traffic's moving. So the traffic's creeping along at 5 miles per hour, I'd be filtering at about 10, 15 miles per hour. You know, I'm about 5 or 10 miles per hour faster. So at what speed would I not filter then? I'm talking about travelling through a town just now, okay? So a lot of roads, certainly in the towns round about me, the towns in the cities, and I think a lot of Scotland's doing exactly the same thing, possibly even the whole of the UK, they're making it a mandatory 20 miles per hour just to kind of slow everybody down a bit. If you're in a road that's 20 miles per hour, how much opportunity are you going to have to filter? And that depends on how fast the traffic is moving. You know, if the traffic's moving at 15 miles per hour, there's not really much point filtering, because if you do say want to go 10 miles per hour faster, that means you're going to be breaking the speed limit. If they're creeping along doing 5 miles per hour, then yeah, fine, absolutely. Pass them, you know, doing an extra 5 or 10 miles per hour and you're still going to be within the speed limit. So you have to remember that. When you're filtering, you don't want to be breaking any rules, especially speed limits. I apply that to every single road that I'm on where potentially filtering might be an option. If I'm on a 40 miles per hour road, you know, if the traffic's travelling at 35, why would you filter? When does it become too fast? Because on motorways, you can filter as well. You know, if you're on a motorway at rush hour, there may be a hold up in traffic. There could be, for any reason, traffic's moving really slowly. Filtering on a motorway is exactly the same as filtering in a town, but there are other things you have to take into consideration. If the traffic's travelling at like 40, 50 miles per hour, why would you filter? You know, there's no real reason to do it. I've seen a lot of bikers doing it, you know, they'll absolutely scream past you doing whatever speed, you know, you're maybe filtering at 20, 30 miles per hour and then you'll pull back in and then somebody will just race up in the middle doing silly speeds, you know. I don't recommend doing that, there's just so much that can go wrong. Play it by ear, judge it on the road, judge it on the speed. You know, if it's going too fast and you feel a little bit uncomfortable filtering at that speed, don't filter, pull back in. You know, if traffic's moving at a decent enough pace where there's no reason to filter, then play it safe, you know. There's absolutely no reason to risk injuring anyone just to go an extra 5 or 10 miles per hour, you know, what's the point? That's the way that I look at the speed when filtering. Now what about brakes? What brakes do you use? Again, it depends on what kind of speed you're doing. If you're just kind of creeping through traffic, engine braking and back brake is absolutely fine. If for any reason you're filtering a lot faster than that, then potentially the front brake might have to be used. What about your body position then when you're filtering? Your body position shouldn't be any different from any other aspect of riding. You should be nice, loose, comfortable, you don't want to be stiff. Because if you're stiff, you can't turn handlebars, you can't do those slow manoeuvre things. You know, but by staying nice and relaxed, it is absolutely no problem. So what about filtering on motorways? Alright, now the thing you have to remember with motorways is, it's a faster road, there's going to be more road users there, and there's going to be a different variety of vehicles. Small, big, you know, they're all going to be there. If you're on a two-lane motorway, then obviously if you do need to filter between lanes one and two, you've got no other option. Don't use the hard shoulder. If there's a bus lane there, you can use the bus lane, but check for signs first. Some different cities have their own rules when it comes to that sort of thing. Usually it'll be a blue sign, and it'll say, permitted vehicles would be like, you know, obviously a bus, taxi and motorbikes or cycles or something like that. Then it might even have a time frame, you know, so maybe after half five, after half six, then anybody can use it. But between those hours, only motorbikes, buses can use it. If you're on a multi-lane motorway, for example, let's just say it's a three-lane motorway, what I'd suggest you to is if you decide to filter, filter between lanes two and three. You're not going to get those big vehicles like buses and lorries. Occasionally you'll get them in lane two, you know. You'll get those uh, lorries that try and overtake another lorry going up a hill and it is just a race that never ends. By filtering between lanes two and three, you cut the chance of having to filter past vehicles like that, especially lorries. 
they have really wide back ends and sometimes things like bumpers or whatever can stick out quite a bit and they can be a little bit tricky to get round sometimes and the other thing that you can eliminate a wee bit is you don't get so many lane jumpers you know, I call them lane jumpers if you've ever been on a busy motorway you'll see them, you know, it'll be cars they'll just in and out of lanes constantly trying to get any advantage trying to save any amount of time possible the third lane is mainly for overtaking it's not necessarily going to have so many people cutting back in to lane 2 unless they're obviously they're coming over and need to get into a junction or whatever or a, an exit sorry so the lane jumpers won't be quite as much you'll still get them absolutely you'll still get them if it's a four lane five lane motorway then at least do it in lanes two or three or if you can move over a wee bit if you need to it depends on what the traffic's doing and something you have to look out for especially on motorways but it should be something you're doing any time when you're filtering what you should be looking for what you should be observing all that sort of stuff and on a motorway what you'll see a lot of is you'll see a lot of big gaps opening up now gaps can open up on a motorway for any number of reasons it could just be the flow of the traffic you know traffic will kind of speed up slow down speed up slow down and that will naturally create these gaps and that's absolutely fine but the thing you need to remember about that is you're not the only person that's looking for gaps and it makes it more dangerous because we're on two wheels so you could be competing against say a car and what's even more dangerous is it could be a car that you've not seen so it could be a car coming over from the left or it could be a car in front of you ready to pull out and like it happens a lot on the motorway people are pulling out and there is absolutely no indicators used all right so you need to be watching for that stuff i see a gap there which i can pull back into but who else has seen it maybe there's a car that's going to pull out in front of me so what you might be wanting to look for is indicators is there any cars indicating regardless if it's that gap or not you should be looking for that stuff anyway and if you see any indicators that's going to suggest that anything's going to be coming in front of your path don't filter because there's a good chance they're not going to see you you know and you pull up to go past them and they pull in and then you collide with each other obviously we don't want that you're looking to see if there's any cars that might be angled differently so if a car is slightly angled like that they could be trying to pull out to move into a different lane or vice versa so look for cars that are angled you know rather than straight on at the road because if they're angled they could be trying to pull out again especially on motorways you'll get a lot of cars that will do that and they won't indicate they'll just angle and as soon as they see a gap behind them whoop, they'll pull out so you need to be looking for all that stuff what are the cars doing what do the cars look like what are their indicators doing and another reason gaps can get created is there could be say the car in front of you they've created a gap to let another road user either come on to the motorway or pull into the lane that's the kind of things you need to be looking for if there is gaps that you intend to use you know just make sure that it's safe to go in it and if there's gaps you don't intend to use and you just intend to filter past them pass them with care just in case anybody's pulling in them anyone's pulling out them all that sort of stuff one thing that helps you with this sort of stuff is by making sure that you're seen if you have a high vis jacket wear it make sure your lights are on if you've got a white helmet or a brightly colored helmet wear that you know it just gives any road users in front of you more chance to be seen in their mirror if they're all dressed in black or whatever it might not be as noticeable out their peripheral vision but if they're driving along and then all of a sudden they see this light and bright white jacket it just catches their eye and they go oh there's a biker coming up i honestly can say that i've not had too much trouble with other road users i've had the occasional one who will deliberately not move so you can't get past because they think that we are not allowed to filter you know they think it's illegal or they think that it's not fair because they can't do it and we can there's even a lot of situations now where you'll see the cars they'll actually move over a wee bit for you and if that does happen give them a wee courteous wave and another thing you need to watch out for is other bikers you know other bikers filter too if you spot them coming up behind you in your mirror whether it be a solo biker or a group of bikers and they're traveling faster than what you're doing just say you're new to filtering that confidence isn't really high so you're just taking your time which is the best way to do it if they're coming up behind you you don't want to hold them up you know just pull in when you get a chance let them pass give them that wee courteous biker etiquette wave if you decide to carry on filtering you can pull back out so you need to be wary of so many things just make sure that 
you're observing everything, even more than what you normally would. You're surrounded by cars, they could do anything at a moment's notice. Or if you're going through a town and you decide to filter, are there any junctions? You know, just like overtaking, don't overtake past a junction because there could be a car coming out. There could be a car going to pull out to the right to go into that junction who just hasn't indicated. You know, so you're looking for all these things. The biggest things to remember about filtering is to take your time. If you do decide to filter, make sure that you're filtering through big enough gaps. Don't leave it to the last minute and go, I can't get through that. You don't want to be clipping mirrors, you don't want to be clipping cars, you don't want to be doing any of that. You know, you want to get through traffic nice and smoothly without even brushing anyone else. So make sure that whatever route you're going, make sure that you can get through it. So what about filtering on roundabouts? Just be very, very careful if you do that. You might not have the best view of the road if you've got a car right next to you. There's no law that says that you cannot filter on a roundabout. Obviously not on the roundabout. I wouldn't suggest filtering on a roundabout. But on the lead up to the roundabout, yeah, you, I mean, you can. Just be careful, you know, again. It could be multi-lanes leading on to a roundabout. So just be very, very careful if you decide to do that. And the same with things like traffic lights zebra crossings, all these sort of things, you can filter leading up to them, but what the highway code suggests is stop behind, you know, the first car. So if you're going up to the traffic lights, you're filtering through traffic, and what you want to do is you want to stop behind the first car, or the car that's at the front of the queue, you want to stop behind that car. And you can also filter on the zigzag lines, you know you get zigzag lines at primary schools and things like that you can filter, see like this, you can filter with stuff like that but the same rule applies, don't pass the car at the front of the queue if you've never filtered before and you want to start filtering don't go out at rush hour and think I'm going to fly through everything go out at say maybe lunchtime where it's a bit less busy but there's still going to be cars on the road look for massive gaps between the traffic don't look for something that's just wider than your bike you know you can get through them you know you can kind of maneuver your bike through it a wee bit but i wouldn't start doing stuff like that until you're kind of comfortable with filtering in general so take your time be safe if you're unsure don't filter it's the best way to look at it the only way you're going to get good at filtering is by filtering if you're completely you know not comfortable with filtering at all don't filter. Obviously it makes sense for bikers to filter because at the end of the day, like we said at the start of the video, there are some cons to filtering but there are also a lot of pros and the main ones are, you know, it saves time, it saves fuel, it cuts down on congestion and also it actually helps keep the rider and the bike cool. If you're sitting in traffic and you decide I'm not going to filter, I'm just going to sit here. And if you're sitting there for maybe 30 seconds, a minute at a time, and then moving, just creeping and creeping, the bike's getting hotter and hotter and so is the rider. Because there's no air travelling over you, there's no air going through the bike, so it just sits there heating up. What we're going to do just now, dudes, is we're going to head along to that car park. And we're just going to briefly go over some slow manoeuvre stuff. You know, you might be absolutely fine with slow manoeuvre. It's pretty much something you do in all aspects of learning to ride from your CBT through your Mod 1 and your Mod 2. So slow manoeuvre will be used in every single one of them. Just by going out somewhere like this maybe once a week for 5 or 10 minutes, just having a wee practice, it will make a significant difference to your riding. It will also make you a more confident rider because you're able to manage those slow manoeuvre situations so much more. If it's something you're not comfortable with, practice it. Slow manoeuvre. There's three key things to it. Throttle, clutch, brake. When I say brake, I mean back brake. If you check out my braking video, we go over back brakes and stuff and how you're supposed to use brakes effectively. The two main things are obviously your throttle and your clutch. Now the back brake is there to get used if you need to, so if you're creeping at a nice solid pace and rather than constantly doing that, if you just fire the back brake, it'll slow you down just enough just to kind of, you know, bring that speed down if you need to. And also, you can actually help keep the bike a bit stable just by, you know, applying a small amount of back brake. When you first start doing it, it can be a wee bit torture on your hands, especially your left hand, because, you know, you're constantly in and out 
you know, and your hand's constantly in that squeeze grip position and it can get a wee bit sore, so that's why it's a good idea to kind of practice it, you know, off-road. It helps build up your muscle memory, helps build up the stamina on your hand as well. Learning where your biting point is on your bike is key, right? So if you put it in into gear, all right, just put your foot on either brake, it doesn't matter, I always like to use a back brake. And what you're doing is you're feeling the bike and you're listening to the engine. So I don't know how well this will pick this up. Hear the engine? It's quite high and then it goes brrrr. Hear it? It's because the revs are dropping with that biting point. So that's my biting point. So learning where your biting point is, is really helpful. Not just guessing, not just feeling for it going, oh, there's a biting point, that'll do. Actually physically learning where it is, and that helps that muscle memory. There is my biting point, you know. I don't have to put it in gear to know that. I know it's not there. I know it's not there. I know for a fact it's there. That's where my biting point is. So by learning that, your slow control is always going to be pretty good, all right? So when it comes to slow control, right, it's the biting point and it's adding just enough revs you don't want to crack open the revs so all i'm doing is my foot is resting on the back brake i'm not pushing on the back brake it's just resting if i need to just kind of push my foot down a wee bit out with the biting point there's my biting point there see the bike starting to move tiny tiny amount of of throttle now what i'm doing is i'm just pushing the back brake slightly just to help balance the bike now if you want to let out the clutch, a little bit more throttle. What you'll find is when you go around the corner like this, you have to add more revs to help keep the bike stable going around the corner. You don't want the bike falling. So again, you can do this, you know, all the way down to like two, even one miles an hour, you know. And if you feel the handlebars starting to go a wee bit array all over the place, just feather that back brake and it helps you keep the bike stable. See, I'm back braking it and the bike's a lot more straight. Doing stuff like this is absolute key for your Mod 1 because your Mod 1, you're going to be doing things like your slalom, you know? You're going to be in and out of the cones, you're going to be doing your figure of eight, all that sort of stuff. And by learning all that stuff, learning that slow manoeuvre, it's just going to make so much more difference. Try and get used to it at maybe say like five miles an hour. You know, just stay at five miles per hour, see if you feel, and then try and go to four, you know? Just bring the bike down a wee bit, stay at four, and then down to three, and then if you're feeling really good about it, try and get it down to one. But obviously don't push it to the point where you might drop the bike, you know, I don't want you doing that. If you're doing, say, like, two miles an hour, say, if you slow it way down, right, and if you feel the bike is starting to kind of tip like you're going to drop the bike, just put the power back on, and it'll just pick the bike back up, straighten the bike up for you. So that's slow maneuver stuff is key to filtering but it's also key to so many different aspects of riding a bike whether it be doing a u-turn whether it be doing slalom whether it be just creeping through traffic no matter what it is and by coming out to a place like this what you can do is just do what i'm doing you know there's no real rhyme or reason i'm just no, doing this with the bike, look, tilt your head where you're wanting it to go. If you're going really slow and you feel the handlebar starting to go side to side, if you apply a wee bit of back brake, that can sometimes help you straighten it out. All right, I'm applying the back brake just now and I'm going nice and straight. If I take the brakes off, see straight away, you know, you can keep it straight without using the back brake, of course. But if you do feel that the handlebars are starting to go a bit all over the place, feather that back brake and that helps stabilise the bike and it helps you keep the handlebars straight. I'm going to head home and I'm going to put some diagrams up on the screen and I'm going to do some voiceover stuff. And we'll talk about different scenarios in filtering and what you can expect them to look like and what you should do. So I've popped a few diagrams up on screen and what we're going to do is we're going to go over a few different scenarios that you can expect to see while out filtering. So the first one is the classic filtering scenario that you would expect to see is basically threading the bike through the cars. So if all the cars are either stationary or moving fairly slow on either side of the road, you can thread your bike up the centre of the road providing there's enough space for you to fit your motorcycle between all the cars while you're filtering. So while you're doing this sort of filtering, you need to be aware of what the cars may potentially do, and that's on either side of the road. Obviously, if it's single lane, then you're not going to expect to see the cars 
pulling out to pass other cars, unless of course there's a car stationary at the side of the road, then you would have to pull out to pass it. So you need to be aware of things like that. Also, if there's any junctions or anything, don't filter past a junction because there could be somebody ready to pull into that junction and they've not indicated and if you're unaware of what their intentions are and they turn right to take the junction while you're filtering you could collide with the car and we don't want that so like we spoke about earlier on in the video about observing everything while you're filtering especially this threading style of filtering not every car is going to allow you to pass some might move over intentionally to cut down the gap so if you see that and you're not able to get through the gap, just pull back in behind them. There's no much point getting angry, getting frustrated. But it doesn't happen that often. Most of the time, there'll either be a big enough gap or you will get a courteous car driver who will move over to the left slightly. If they do that, just give them a wee nod or a wee thumbs up just to let them know that you've seen what they've done. If you're doing that threading style filtering on a motorway, you have to be so much more observant because now you're not dealing with one lane, you're dealing with potentially two, three or more. So if it's a standard two lane motorway and the traffic is stationary or traveling slow and you decide to filter through the traffic, again, you have to be observant of what the cars are doing on both lanes. Are they indicating? Are the cars angled differently, which makes it look like they could potentially try and pull out? And that works with both lanes, so be aware that people in the right hand lane could potentially try and come over to the left to take an exit. And again, be very very wary because you will see lane jumpers, especially on motorways, where they'll try and get any advantage possible just by switching between the lanes to hopefully save a few seconds. And those lane jumpers don't always make their intentions clear. A lot of the times they do, and when you're observing, that's the stuff you're looking for. What's the car doing? Are they indicating? Can this car in front of me possibly pull out? Now, if we're back in a town, for example, and your side of the road is at a complete standstill, but the opposite side of the road is nice and clear, you can indicate, pull out, and just pass them all as long as you're doing it safely and you're keeping your speed nice and low. If you decide to do that, just be wary that there obviously might be another road user coming in the opposite direction at some point. So it could be a car, truck, lorry. Also, what is the road doing? Is the road going round a bend? Is it starting to curve? If you can't see round that, pull back in, don't filter going round a bend. While approaching things like traffic lights, zebra crossings, you can filter as well, even if there's zigzag lines in place. But you have to stop behind the car at the front of the queue. Don't go cutting out in front of that car to stay back behind that car, that way you've got adequate room. If you try and cut in front of that car, you're limiting how much space you have. You don't know where they're sitting in terms of the traffic lights. They could actually be over the line a little bit, which means you've got to go over the line to get in front of them. You can also filter while approaching roundabouts. Now, roundabouts can be anywhere in the UK. You can have them coming off dual carriageways, you can have them in towns. You can filter while approaching, but you have to be very, very, very careful. Obviously, don't filter while going round a roundabout, but leading up to the roundabout, you can filter if you wish to do so, but you have to be very, very careful. What I'd suggest you do, if you decide to do that, apply the same principle as traffic lights and crossings. Stop behind the car at the front of your queue. You don't want to stop beside them because your view is then going to be restricted of traffic coming from the right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said at the start of the video, it is just a discussion on filtering, telling you a little bit about it and showing you some scenarios that you can expect to come across when you're out by yourself on the road. So this stuff isn't Mod 2 related, it's more of past your test riding tips because it can be a scary thing to get into and just by having a little bit of knowledge it can go a long long way when it comes to filtering but hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video if you have guys give it a thumbs up i really do appreciate every single one of your likes and of course if you want to see all of my uploads click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're there that way you get notified every time i upload a video but until next time dudes stay safe ride safe take it easy